Okay, so welcome everyone. We are um, holding our Youth Advisory Board meeting, which is being held virtual per the governor's orders um, currently. Um, and tonight is May 6, 2021 at 7 p.m. And we have members present here. So I'm just gonna call off people's names just so I have to make sure that I have it for um, attendance records um, and making sure I'm not missing anybody. And I'll continue to let people in as uh, they come online. So I have Barbara B, I yep. have Kathy Bagley, I have Eric, I have Pam, I have Patrick, I have um, Eileen, I have Barbara R, I have Janice, I have Bonnie, Michelle, Sarah and Colleen. Did I miss anybody? We're all good. So I'm officially calling the meeting to order at 7.09 tonight. And um, we actually met um, in April, but we didn't have a quorum. So that's why we don't have minutes for April's meeting. So I just wanna let you guys know that. And I sent out the minutes from the March meeting so if we want to make a motion to approve, I think we have enough people. Let me just double count. One, two, three. Seven, yeah, we're good. I move the March minutes be approved as printed. I'll second it. Who was the second? Was that you, Pam? Yep. Okay, thank you. All right. So financial report, um, so our balance is looking pretty good right now. Um, we have, I just had it written down on my phone because I pulled it up before, hold on. It'd be nice if I know where I put it. Oh, $3,479.67. Um, thanks to um, all of our fundraising and um, also a donation that Barbara Rue was able to uh, uh, coordinate, which is awesome, from the Taxpayers Association. And um, we will be deducting $1,000 out of here for the scholarship. We're, we're in the middle of processing that check as we speak. Um, all right. Sorry. Was that you, Eric, or is that your? Yeah, I'm going to mute because of my radio going off. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you were trying to say something. Um, we can go right into the youth service report um, just so we can move things along for the evening. Um, Patrick, you're somewhere here. Oh, there you are, Patrick. Do you want to give an update for us? And maybe you and Kathy can give an update on kind of what's going on with Parks and Rec for the summer programming. Well, as far as the youth programming, there, there's nothing new to report, although I did put in the request for the check for the scholarship today. And uh, the, actually, the middle school reached out to me about they want to do a survey of after school programs that the kids would like this year. So they asked me to turn, turn in a little write up about everything we've done so far. So I basically sent them all the youth ASAP programs we've done for at least the last five or six years with a little write-up and description because they're gonna use that as a basis to build their survey from. And then they're gonna come back to me with some ideas of what new programs they'd like to add and teachers who would be willing to do those. So we may have a whole bunch of new ASAP programs in the fall, hopefully. Right. So that's basically it for youth services right now. And I don't know if Kathy, you can join in whenever you want, but we're, we're in the process of setting up for camp. I can only speak from Nature Center camp right now. We're going to run about 40 or 50% capacity, which is about 40 kids. We're not going to do any program for older kids like the CIT because we're kind of focused on the kids that actually need the child care aspect. And we have a kind of a small building, not a lot of rooms. So we don't want to overwhelm the building and just have it crawling with people all summer long. So we're going to focus on those 40 kids. So there won't be any birthday parties or rentals. It'll just be the summer camp program going for the summer. And registration starts for non-residents on the 12th, but residents on the 13th. And Kathy, you want to join in and update what's going on at the other camps? Sure, but I'm just going to correct one thing, Patrick, only because you we didn't get the word out to staff yet. 
Uh, residents are, are Wednesday the 12th, but non-residents are um, a, a, a week later. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just did that to make sure we give residents an opportunity to sign up for the camps because as Patrick mentioned, um, we do have to reduce the numbers that we can take just because of building space and making sure we're following all the protocols from the Office of Early Childhood. It's a little different this year, but we're excited. We're basically going to try and run everything we've run in the past. So there's a lot of different camps available to the uh, students in town for the different age groups. So that's all coming up. Our goal is to open both pools this summer, probably still be the reservation system we used for Mill Woods last year. Again, because that's the Department of Public Health, the State Department of Public Health is giving us guidelines to operate under to be able to open the pools. So um, we're hoping to have a lot of things going on for the students this summer. And we're gonna keep an eye on numbers and see if we have the ability, if we have waiting lists to see if there's a way that we might be able to extend our limits. Uh, Cause things change every day. Uh, so we're just keeping an eye on everything and moving forward for the summer. What is normal capacity or what do we normally get townwide for camp participation spread across the camps? So then what is, what is half of that? Well, um, the nature camp is a good example. Uh, Patrick generally would take uh, 80 children each week for a camp session. And, and plus 12 tweet teenagers of CIT. So we can do like 92. Got it. And so he's going down to 40 with the potential of looking at lists coming in and maybe adding another 10, depending on um, what happens with registration. Um, I'll, I'll explain our summer playground program. Um, last year, we had 40 children enrolled. Uh, this year, we're doing one cohort of 20 children and then a second cohort of 20 children to still get to that 40 number. And then that's actually gonna be at Emerson Williams this year because we had to share school space because the Y and the playground program used to share space at Hamner, but we're splitting up again to space out the children. So a lot of planning, a lot of great work with the school district staff in terms of letting us go into different schools than we might normally. Uh, and moving some programs around because they're using web schools pretty much as, much as a lot of summer school activities. We used to have our programs in web also, so we've moved them to Emerson. So it's been a real kind of a jigsaw puzzle, but everybody worked together to take advantage of the facilities that we have and how best to use them. Does that give you an idea of numbers? Thank you. I was just curious. Sure. Are you expecting good registration rates in terms of kids? We think so. Just because mm -hmm. talking to some parents, they're saying they're looking for things for their children this year. It's really hard to tell though, because you don't know if their parents yeah. are gonna wanna keep children home. Okay. I get calls daily asking if we're gonna be running camp this summer. So I, I'm hopeful, but I've experienced these school vacation camps where registration was terrible that we're usually good too. So I'm cautiously optimistic. And when does registration start? N next Wednesday. And I believe that's May 12th. Do I have that right, Patrick? Yes. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Michelle, do you want to give any quick updates on JRB? I thought I had already had the volume up. Yeah. So we currently have two carryover cases open and four new cases. So we recently got one from the middle school that we're addressing, but we had a total of 18 cases for the year before they closed out. And a lot of those were carryovers. Majority were carryovers, but it might so we, pick up on that COVID is changing the kids are in school more. Yep. And we're able to um, 
we were able to do some a lot of case management through the year, not as much formal meetings with the families, but Michelle was able to keep a, a case load with them and, and maintain contact with them, which was awesome. Um, and um, just to go over quickly with social services. Um, so we wrapped up um, doing vaccines. Um, so we uh, finished our second rounds of uh, vaccine shots through our senior center. So we were targeting um, more, more vulnerable populations in Wethersfield, Wethersfield residents, um, trying to get them to a place local that they were able to, um, to attend to get their vaccines. We were very successful with that collaboration with the health district, which was awesome. Um, and we are uh, looking if you know we, we need to partner any time in the in the future with the health district. It went pretty smooth, and uh, we were able, like I said, able to help that popu a lot of the population in Weathersfield that might have had some issues getting to get to a vaccine. Our um, tra our elderly transportation service um, helped us um, with getting rides for some of our senior citizens um, so that they were able to get to the vaccine clinic. So it was a huge success and it was a great partnership. Um, we we're also in the process of um, just starting doing our camperships. Um, so those are going strong. I know um, the brochure just came out, I think last week. So we're getting uh, the calls and the emails in to process those camperships, which is awesome. Um, so we'll be doing that. Energy assistance was extended into June. So we're continuing with that as well. Um, and kind of just with all of our operations with the food bank have um, been keeping us really busy um, and all the other needs that have come up with residents in terms of just navigating COVID stuff and then unemployment um, SNAP benefits, all that stuff. And we will be doing, we do with our weekend meals, we'll be carrying that along through the summer into summer meals um, and looking to see what the schools are doing with um, summer lunches um, for, the, uh, for the students. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, I didn't know if anybody had anything from the schools that they wanted to talk about. I know there was an incident yesterday where there were some soft lockdowns at the middle school. Um, I don't know if anybody had any information on that. Um, from what I saw, it had to do with a uh, possible um, two students, um, I believe with um, THC edibles. Does anybody have any information or wanna share any? Anything about that? I don't have any more information than you do, but I do think in terms of the goals of this group and it's recently awarded Drug-Free Communities Grant <laughs> that the consequences that have been deployed both socially and by the school may have a really nice effect on some peers. Awesome, thank you. Eric, do you have any information about that? about the incident at the middle school yes was it yesterday i believe it was yesterday i don't actually i don't know anything i could find out but i i haven't heard anything so yeah i was just interesting to and i thought i'd bring it up just in case anybody wanted to talk about it um but i'm sure we can continue the conversation in in the months to come um, <clears throat> One thing that came to my attention of course this is hearsay because i'm hearing it from middle school children um is that one of the students was going to play football at the high school and will no longer be allowed to do so in the fall. So I don't know if that's true or not, but if that is the case, I think, you know, that's consequences, you know, I always have mixed feelings about consequences because like the soft side of me is like, oh, maybe this person made a mistake, but the other side is it sends a message when consequences are put in place. Yeah. I feel like that might be more rumor than fact, but you know, I can't speak with any inside knowledge of that. But sure. Well, so that is a kind of a great lead-in. So we do have Bonnie Smith here, who um, has been uh, is a resident in town, has uh, stu has uh, students in the school system, but has been really instrumental in helping us um, do our surveys. Um, that we've done twice already and also um, helped us uh, with the Drug-Free Communities Grant. 
And I just wanted to give a little update on the Drug Free Communities Grant. We've had some trainings, just getting used to um, the federal requirements and all the training that goes along with it. We have, we were able to hold interviews for a project, uh, a prevention coordinator position. And um, we held uh, panel interviews and then um, second interviews and we were able to offer a position to somebody. So we're really excited about that. Um, it's all pending, obviously, background checks and um, drug tests and all that good stuff. So we're hoping to have someone on board by the end of this month, beginning of June, which is really exciting. So it'd be a full-time prevention coordinator um, who will be uh, working in our through our department, social and youth services. And we'll be working closely with Bonnie. Um, so we're really excited about all that. We are going to be looking to really dive into parts of the grant um, through our coalition here. So I'm really excited. So now we know Bonnie's here. So the real work has to start. Um, but we're excited. I know that we're going into the summer and I know COVID has been weird. But um, I had tossed around some ideas um, like we've done in the past of kind of trying to hold maybe a retreat over the summer to kind of, you know, kind of bring our coalition together in person, socially distancing, maybe outdoors, um, sending out a doodle poll to kind of see if we can make that happen maybe sometime, you know, towards the end of July or August. Um, but we'll throw out a couple dates to see what works and kind of really start diving in to uh, the grant and some of our uh, deliverables and all that good stuff with uh, with Bonnie and um, the new person, the new prevention coordinator and myself and our coalition members. Um, so we're really excited. We did talk briefly, uh, Bonnie and I did the other day about, we are gonna look to um, talk to the school system about doing another youth needs assessment survey this fall because it has been actually, this fall will be two years since our last one, which is crazy to think about, but they really like two-year data, and I'd be interested to see what the data is going to look like now after the pandemic and everything that's going on. So I think it'll give us some good information. Um, so with all that, I'll turn it over to if Bonnie wants to kind of add anything or give any input or any direction from her end. Certainly not any uh, explicit direction, but I'm really thrilled that the town has received this grant and it's really hard to start up any sort of program in a pandemic. So it's um, motivating that now there will be a coordinator in place. And um, I know most of you and most of you know me through the student survey process, but my job with um, my business is to work with folks who have federal grants and serve as an evaluation consultant. So that's where that survey work comes in play. But uh, I work with a handful of folks that have prevention grants, the same as um, this grant or slightly different across the state coalition base as their evaluator, which is like the worst title ever, but it is what the government provides us. Really, my role as an evaluator is to work with you all, Erica and the coordinator on making sure all the data requirements for the grant are met per the federal, um, they lay it out. And so Erica said it nicely, like the government likes data every 24 months. Well, yes, they do, but they require it. So <laughs> <laughs> more importantly, um, we wanna know what's happening with our youth and plan our strategies accordingly, but we also need to make sure that we're meeting those grant requirements of submitting data every 24 months. Um, and my job, again, is to help make sure that happens and to use the data to plan strategies with you all that are in line with what we've determined are the risk factors for youth. So that's what I'm here for. I'm a partner. I'm not measuring you all in any sense. So look forward to, um, hopefully, thank you, Bonnie, the, uh, Bonnie and uh, our new prevention coordinator to possibly be reaching out to members, um, us doing some, you know, some activities together and some um, kind of, you know, getting to, to the root of some things and kind of establishing where we're going from here. Um, in the near future, I would hope to spend, if we do end up doing a retreat, which I, I think would be a great way to kind of tie everything in in the summer and then know where we're going in the fall. 
Um, I think a, that'll be a great way and to kind of just focus directly on the grant there. Um, and then obviously myself, Bonnie, the new prevention coordinator will be doing work behind the scenes. I would like, I know we had talked about, um, you know, presenting the scholarship in June, but I would like somehow to introduce you if we have our new prevention coordinator, everything goes well, fingers crossed, and they're hired in the beginning of June to introduce them to you guys. Um, so just, I, I'm going to keep our date for our meeting and then we'll proceed from there um, on any other, other um, activities that we're going to do in June. If anything, just at least as a meet and greet or anything that formal that we need to get done. Um, so anything I'm missing, Bonnie, that we talked about? I am working on actually um, trying to get our marketing consultant on board. Oh, good. So, um, we could brand our coalition. So um, I'm getting quotes and, and discussing and meeting with them so that we can go with the best fit for our coalition and really start outreaching into the community, letting the community know we have this grant, we're here, build our coalition and brand everything possible um, and be all uniformed. So that's really exciting too. That, I think that's, I'm, I'm excited to hear about that. Um, coalitions that have marketing consultants tend to achieve more, more quickly in my experience. But um, I think you're spot on Erica with those next steps and reminding the group when the time is right of what we said we'd do, I think is really key. Uh, the timeline will look a little differently because it's a little slow to get moving in COVID as we mentioned, but I think that's important. So everyone just remembers what this is all about. Awesome. And uh, the consultant, the marketing consultant was written into the grant. So it'll be covered by the grant as well. So just for you guys to know that. Um, Erica? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Question about the marketing consultant. Are you screen? Are you interviewing those right now? Or where? where's the status of that process? So I got some referrals from other drug-free communities that have done. So they have consultants in the area that have done the work. And I'm, yes, I'm in the process of getting um, interviews, getting quotes from them. So then we can um, move, go through the process formally, like that we have to do through the town and then go from there. Okay. I just know two people who do marketing consulting for nonprofits, and I didn't know whether you want to have any other hats in the mix. Absolutely. If you guys want to pass along any names, I'd be happy. With, if you can send me an email with the name and maybe a contact, I'd be happy to reach out to them. It's a, like a part-time or it's an ad hoc kind of thing, right? So they'd have, a, they'd have an expectation and a deliverable, but it's not an hourly position or it's not an ongoing part-time position. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Deliver this flyer, deliver this marketing piece, put this out on social media. Yeah. Okay. And we have an amount that we have that I wrote that was in the grant that we have to work with. Okay. And then for how long of a period of like, how long would the ongoing relationship be about? Well, ultimately, I don't know, Bonnie, if you maybe have a better answer on this. Um, I would definitely have them for, you know, till the end of for the, I mean, I would assume the next couple of years, right? Or at least a year or two? A year or two. Okay, great. You, you know for sure that the funding is secure until the conclusion of this fiscal year. And when I was looking, there's a non-competitive reapplication that Erica will have to drive until there's a coordinator in place. And I was looking at it today and that includes a revision of the 12 month action plan. So it depends whether or not you would commit to that for the next 12 months and your budget, of course, if it allows for it. Yeah, which I'm looking at it probably will. And I know with this grant, there was some talk that that you can get um, an extension on the funding past the deadline just because of COVID and everything. So that's just something we'll talk about, Bonnie, when we, we discuss all that and with yeah. the coordinator. Great. Do yeah. we know what the status of the legalization of marijuana is? is before the legislature, because I think that's going to be a really interesting issue. I don't know the logistics right now. I know it's a big talk with our uh, Connecticut Youth Service Bureau's organization. Um, a lot of them are writing in testimony. Um, Bonnie, do you have any word on any of that? I kind of rely on the coalitions to tell me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. I have our, we have a big meeting 
in a week or two. So I think they're going to discuss that, that information there, but I don't know if anybody else has any other information on it. Because I see it as a real, I mean, with the families I deal with, with DCF, I just, you know, I'm just horrified at what I'm seeing. Everybody runs off and gets their medical marijuana card and it's a mess. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Okay, so we can, um, if, unless anyone has any questions, we can move on. Um, I didn't know, I put on here, we kind of discussed the Abbott scholarship already and we kind of have a plan and I'll, we'll be seeing some emails about presenting that coming forward. Um, I know we had talked briefly about doing a possible volunteer recognition event. Um, I know we had kind of left it last time that it might be kind of difficult for this year given everything that's going on. But just keep in mind that um, we could always do something come the fall if we don't want to wait until yeah. you know, um, the spring or if there's an event that we maybe want to think of and revamp what we looked at the, the volunteer recognition of that. Um, I encourage you guys to share those ideas and we can definitely you know, discuss and you know, I'm happy to try to make anything logistically work if it, if it if it fits for the group. Maybe we could think about doing something around Thanksgiving in, in term, and doing something virtual in the sense of having set up a Facebook page and maybe have people post about volunteers, volunteer opportunities they've had that have made a difference to them or volunteers they've known that have been a very positive effect, something like that. I mean, we would just have to set it up and, and see what kind of response we would get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I don't know what the world's going to look like in November, so maybe we can be in person somewhere. Um, I'm just not sure, but I think if we want to, you know, target something for the fall, I think that's, uh, you know, obviously September is pretty tough because everyone's getting back into the groove of things, but um, October into November, I mean, everyone's in a giving spirit, you know, come November, December, so something to look at and, you know, maybe change up our traditional, but we could still have our youth volunteer recognition of that in April, but try to think of something different. And then we will be having some stuff through the, the drug-free prevention grant um, that we will be doing too. So just to keep that in mind. Well, I think because what we've all been through in the past year and it's going on is people have really reconsidered and thought a lot about different things and, you know, maybe, had some different ideas, mm -hmm. been a bit more grateful mm -hmm. and yeah. a little more aware of how fragile life is. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. Um, so feel free to share some ideas and uh, email's great too. If anyone, if anything comes up for anybody and they want to share it via email um, or if anybody wants to discuss anything right now, we can. I don't want to discard our time here. We can definitely do that. And then I just wanted to add that we do, so we know Dylan's going to be graduating. So he probably, I'm assuming, will not be staying on our youth advisory board when he goes off to college, which we completely understand and we appreciate his time and his commitment. Um, but we will need to start thinking. So that will leave us two youth spots open. And I know Eric, you had discussed a potential and I don't know if you wanted to discuss in the group or if you wanna hold off, um, but that, that will bring us to two youth spots that will be opened. And we would really like to build on that youth and, and kind of form like a, an own, I, my, I envision a youth kind of coalition to our big coalition. Yeah, I'll just uh, have to revisit it. It's been a, a little bit, so I'll just make sure that we're still on board and I'll let you know. Perfect, no problem. I'm wondering if it might be worth reaching out to um, Corpus Christi because they do have a number of students from town and maybe there would be an eighth grader from Corpus who might be interested. Yeah, any Weathersfield resident would be, you know, 
great. Um, so if anybody has any connections or able to, um, you know, look, look at some youth that might be interested, eighth grade's awesome because then we know that they'd be on the board for a little while in the coalition. Um, but like I said, like we are gonna gear towards really focusing on forming um, a youth coalition um, in the upcoming months, which will, I think, be very helpful to moving all of this along. I've talked to my eighth grader about it. <laughs> um, and she, she has some interest, but you know, okay. I don't, given my relationship, I don't want there to be any pressure to yeah. her be. No, completely board. understandable. Um, for, from your end, I can pressure her. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I was looking at our action plan in general and the coordinator will certainly jump into this, but it reminded me that one of our goals was to grow this group in general by five people in the first fiscal year of the grant. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. And how great would it be to have, you know, three, two, three, four, five of them being youth, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. So let's, we'll just keep it in mind. I just want to keep throwing it out there because I know you guys all have great connections. So just getting the word out there. I know once we kind of get to the branding, I think that'll get us out there more and people will recognize us because um, I don't know how many people actually recognize the group. I know we've done more in the past couple of years, which is awesome, but um, really looking for that outreach to get into the community. And I did want to share, I don't know if, I think Tyler, our uh, town council liaison, he sent an email to everyone about coming tonight. I just wanted to share it just in case anyone didn't see it. He just said, unfortunately, I'm on, I'm in budget deliberations tonight. The good news is, the good news is that his last final was this afternoon. So he's looking forward to returning to meetings next month and hopes to see everyone soon. So I just wanted to give you that information. <laughs> All right. Anything else anybody wanted to share or discuss or bring up or anything come to mind? I just wanted to mention that although we picked Naz and uh, or Naz, I should say, who was absolutely outstanding, mm -hmm. all the candidates were excellent. You know, we heard from one, we thought that person was terrific. And then the next person was terrific. And then the next person was terrific. And uh, when it boiled down though, something about Nas, holy cow, she's gonna save the world, that girl. <laughs> <laughs> she is something. She's fabulous. Yeah. There was it's something- unfortunate that we, It's unfortunate we couldn't figure out a way to sort of raise up those other candidates or recognize them in some way as, as you know, maybe not with a scholarship, but maybe we can think of some other way. What are you thinking? Oh, well, maybe a book. Hmm. You know, maybe what we could do is we could do a, like a, a give a book to what, to the, the young people who are interviewed and considered a sort of a honorable mention or something. Mm -hmm. Or a, a thought. Noble gift card or something, you know, yeah. Something, yeah, that something that's educational or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not opposed to that. Or even would it be that they choose a charity of their choice that we make a donation on their behalf to, if it's really motivating the volunteering aspect of it, that could be mm -hmm. another idea. Mm -hmm. or, or somehow just identifying them in the community as these amazing young people who are volunteers. Mm, yeah almost like special recognition. So like in a press release, you indicate that Nas was the right. winner, but special recognition to these other, the other Academy Award nominees. <laughs> yeah, cause they, they were good. That's great. Thank you everyone who volunteered to be part of that and who ended up being part of it. Um, I really appreciate it. And it sounds like you guys had a hard decision that you guys had to make, but. 
It was a great one. And thank you to Janice for joining us. It was her first time. Yeah, it was fun. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that it was that hard of a choice. Um, once we met Nas, I, we were pretty unanimous. Um, she just had a certain something mm -hmm. that, uh, was very special. Well, I would like to suggest that we compose some sort of letter um, about her and send it to the two guys that sent us the money because they were very, they were very interested in, you know, they really, they were really interested in who was going to get the scholarship. So it's just, I, obviously one of the addresses I know off the top of my head, Bob Young's, I don't, but I think they would be really tickled. You know, we want to thank you for this donation. We found this remarkable young woman and this is who she is and this is why we chose her. That's a nice idea. Uh, yeah. I, uh, Colleen, do you want me to start it? And uh, maybe you and Janice can add to it. Sure, <laughs> I don't have her application anymore to know, like to remember everything. I shredded everything, so. I, I have it, so I can start. Okay. Okay. And then, that sounds good. You start it and you have a Merrick? You're, you're muted. <laughs> no, I have it too. I got it right here. All right. You know what? I'm coming up to the high school tomorrow to pick up Riley. So if I, if I see you, maybe you can grab him for me. Absolutely. All right. All right. Great. Great idea. Thanks for volunteering, everyone. Um, does anybody have anything else they wanted to bring up or share? There's something I thought that the group might be interested in if it's if you got just a quick minute. Yeah, uh, there's a group of former Weathersfield High School students who have started the primary project. I don't know if any of you have seen it um, on Facebook, um, but it's a group of students, uh, many of who were project choice students. And basically, they have started a nonprofit to um, raise a scholarship for an, a senior who's a project choice student, because yeah. under the dollars for scholars rules and bylaws, um, you have to be a Weathersfield resident to um, be able to get a dollars for scholars sh scholarship in Weathersfield. And in Hartford, you have to attend a Hartford school in order to get a Hartford scholarship. So we have a handful of students that have been part of the Weathersfield community since kindergarten and don't have access to a scholarship. Um, and so these former access, students- Access to a dollars for scholars scholarship. Dollars for scholars, yes, I'm sorry. Dollars for scholars, yes. Um, so these students have taken it upon them, former students have taken it upon themselves to um, contact Doris Duggins, who is um, one of our social studies teachers and um, have really started this whole movement um, from the grassroots up uh, this year. Just last weekend, they did a virtual paint night um, where they raised a ton of money. Um, very talented artists, They're, they are selling stickers and t-shirts and they're all very, very cool. Um, so if it's something that you're interested in, I encourage you to look up Primary Project on Facebook. That is so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Can well, we you know the on our Facebook? Comes to mind. Yep. Yeah, I'll forward it on. I'll, I'll, um, whatever. Thank we you, Colleen. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Colleen. Yeah. The other thought would be to approach Dollars for Scholars and raise this concern to them. And there might be a way to <laughs> sort of adjust so that there could be yeah. some aspect of dollars. They already, already doing that. Yeah, it's already in the process. Yeah, it's, it's a much bigger process than you would think because it's not one scholarship. It's like a hundred scholarships and kind of it's all, they're all individual bylaws and it all gets thrown into one pile of money, I think. I don't really understand all of it, but it's not just one thing. And it's a national um, right. thing. You know right. what I mean? It's yeah. not just a Weathersfield yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's awesome. I'm going to actually, Doris Duncan's on our social justice coalition yep. here in town and um, myself. So I'm definitely going to mention in our next steering committee if she doesn't hey. bring it up because I think it's so powerful to show awesome. this and it's such a great, yeah, such a great thing to lead with. Um, mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, I'm going to share it. I'm sure Doris will have, can talk plenty about it since she's been involved, but definitely want to share that information. And speaking of, that's Thank another- you opportunity that we really want to connect with youth is through the social justice coalition so um please email me if you have any students that you think are very sounds like we do passionate about this this type of stuff um and would like to be involved um and we can get them you know part of our you know coalition pam what's the name of it again primary project okay i'm just writing it down and just for everybody's information, um, Parks and Rec, uh, through the Park Board, they had voted that any choice students in the schools will be considered residents for any of our programs. Wow, great. Just to have that knowledge, too. And we also, in social and youth services, um, camperships are also um, able to applications are able to be filled out for our um, students that maybe are from choice students, open choice students. Well, and the thing is, is, is if this would become more of a public, there'd be more public information about this. It might be that some of the, that people who are planning on establishing a scholarship or maybe have control of a scholarship would say, you know, I never thought about this. I'm willing to adjust. So it's just a thought. Yeah, I mean, this is the work, right? Changing policies that have yeah. been in place because why, you know, why have they been in place? <laughs> well, Project Project Choice has been around. My youngest brother is 58 and, and it was around when he was in grammar school. Mm -hmm. So it's a long time. And they are, I mean, students from other towns that go to school they're, they're our community, you know, they're part of our community. For sure. It looks like Primary Project is a national group though. So it's not just dedicated only to Weathersfield. It looks like they're linked to something larger, but maybe I'm mistaken or maybe I picked up the wrong one on Facebook. I don't know. I wasn't aware of that. I saw uh, it. it looked like there were other comments further back, but maybe oh. I'm, showing my, I'm showing my lack of Facebook knowledge perhaps. <laughs> Uh, did you find it, Colleen? Oh, she's not there. <laughs> it just looked bigger or deeper, Pam. Maybe I'm mistaken, though. Okay. I, I found it. Okay. I'll All share right. it on the page in a few minutes. Perfect. All right. Good stuff, guys. Um, Anything else? So look forward to some emails from me, just of some of the stuff that we discussed earlier, just to kind of finalize June and kind of where we're going with that. Um, and then I will send out a doodle poll to get a retreat on the books for the summer to see when mo most of our coalition members are available to kind of dive into a lot of our uh, the work that we are going to be doing and that's on the the grant that we uh, that we wrote up. All right. Now, is, if the coalition meets, do we have to have a, does that have to be a recorded meeting or can that be more informal? I think it, I think we're going to aim to do it in person. Well, I, no, I understand that part, but oh. does it have to be like a town meeting? Um, I don't think so because it, it's not going to be, because we don't meet during the summer months. And in the past, we've kind of just held our retreats as like just an opportunity for our members to get together and to brainstorm. Right, Kathy? Yes, I would agree. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe we could meet down at Loretta's Dream. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, actually. It's a nice area and we can spread out and whatever everyone feels comfortable with too. I don't want to put anyone in a situation that they don't feel comfortable. Well, we should all be shot by then, so. <laughs> We've all should have had our shots by then. <laughs> I called my brother up and I said, I've been shocked. And he said to me, you know, under normal circumstances, I'd be really concerned about that comment. <laughs> he knows you too well, Barb. Um, all right. So anything else? 
I move we adjourn. You'll confirm the time for the um, next meeting though, correct? You'll do that kind of offline? Yes, yes, all that's gonna be done offline. So just stay tuned. All right. I second the motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> all right. Any, and then everyone good with that? Yes. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Take care. Thank you, Be everyone. Well. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.